coming to you live from the Inland Asia um, studio in Bangkok for the yearly conference that we have for Inland Asia. And I'm so happy to be joined with Lawrence Kwan from Sunseed. Thank you so much for joining us today, Lawrence. How are we? Thank you. I'm good. And uh, it's been a while since I was here and mm. I've seen many developments. I'm very happy to be here. Excellent. We're going straight uh, into the content. So as the Director, Stakeholder and Corporate Affairs um, for Sunseed, um, and to follow up on the last time that we spoke, you shared that the um, spider web Asian grid may not come to pass yet, but it will eventually. Um, we certainly have progressed, but what do you think policymakers, governments, and energy providers need to focus on to ensure Asian becomes fully interconnected? Yes. So far, the government agencies, together with the uh, commercial developers, are hard at work behind the scene. Um, we have already spoken to various uh, stakeholders, government regulators, um, on how to get the interconnect uh, through different uh, transmission codes, two different policies. And for example, in Singapore, it's a liberalized market, while some of our neighbors are not. Mm. So these are some of the market uh, interactions that has to be melt with. Um, Following what we spoke last time and now, um, as an example, various development uh, developers together with Sunseep, uh, EDPR Sunseep, have been working with Indonesian governments, for example, and looking at how it can be uh, interconnected with Singapore, as well as Singapore with Malaysia. And another example would be the accessibility of the hydro dam in Laos, Laos now is made available through the framework of uh, LTMS, which is Laos, Thailand, Malaysia, Singapore. Mm. So such has been going uh, in, in, uh, since the last time we spoke. Mm. Absolutely. Thank you for answering that question. I'm glad we were able to catch up on it. Um, so, <laughs> yeah. So last year you'd said in the past and also. Um, it was almost a given that the grid would take care of itself. Now, internecity takes a lot of collaboration, especially with renewable integration. So what path do you think seems to be the most clear towards incorporation of renewables in a way that keeps the grid reliable and consistent at this time? Yeah. So number one, just to correct uh, the, the common understanding that the grid will take care of itself. Actually, um, grid operators has been hard at work uh, since they have been looking at the intermittencies uh, caused by solar injections into the power grid and at that time was still a very much uh, lower capacity, smaller injections to the grid, um, other uh, re uh, spinning reserves are able to take care of that. But now of recent months, for example, or years, uh, adoptions has increased. So a few things will happen, and uh, I call it hybrids. So solar, for example, will come with a form of storage in order to provide firm power, whether it's uh, designated periodic of the time or 24-7, depending on the design, and these hybrids will come along. Now, hybrids will also be used per city state or per uh, country, depending on the uh, energy demand. It may also be part of the existing gas uh, uh, fleet to augment the continuations of the 24-7 energy demand. So this will be the case uh, moving into the future until uh, we reach a state where um, renewables can fully have firm power throughout 24-7. Uh, that will be a new ball game altogether. Absolutely, yep. And hopefully that's in the works. Um, so I'm also curious, what is your take on which are the top grid approaches or technologies which really can support utilities and IPPs in fortifying their grids and how do these technologies advance, do you think, in the future? Yeah, we, we spoke about smart grid. It's almost like a sexy word used <laughs> loosely everywhere, right? Every conversation. Yes, <laughs> but smart grid is actually really on the smartness. And I think today uh, with maturity, uh, we are talking about smart grid not on a spread over basis, like for example, it's not going to be one grid across Singapore. Um, some of the city, the you know, size of uh, California, for example, it's not going to be one state, one grid. 
that's going to be divided into various uh, uh, microgrid, nanogrid, or even smaller municipal size, so that each of these becomes a net zero, mm -hmm. both a producer as well as a, a, a consumer. Mm -hmm. And each of these grid will take care of its own uh, uh, imbalance or balance with surgical um, balancing tools that is, that is precise to the node or the zones that is needing uh, to beef up. So on a, on a, on a, on a broad scale wise, it's going to be that kind of uh, 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 design concept. The other technology that we'll be using is our wearables um, uh, that will change our lifestyle. Today, the way we are mitigating uh, oil and gas and energy demand, we have not actually looked into our lifestyle. You and I are still in a jacket over this environment. Uh, what are we going to do? Of course, we're not going to go back to the caveman. We only wear skin. Um, <laughs> Yeah. But the way we make our clothes, the way we behave, the way we consume energy, whether it is food or, 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 or lights, air conditioning, uh, we're going to look into all those technology to look into not just, hey, grid works smarter. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we're going to need more evolved, hopefully, than that. Yes. <laughs> going to have to be. Yeah. Yep. So with regards to the conference, what has been, um, I hope you enjoyed your time here, but what's kind of been the most interesting takeaway or insightful takeaway that you'll probably take back with you home to Singapore? Yes. First, I want to comment. Um, today, the, tech, the, the industry has grown uh, and there's this realization of diversity. Mm. And I'm very happy to look at uh, some of the judging criteria, for example, on the, on the, on the uh, event of, of this, this, this scale are looking at women in power. Yep. Well, not in power, power energy, but, but in power and in, in, in authority. And I think this gives uh, a, a greater um, cultural change, mm. um, not just because the, uh, it is an industry uh, a legacy, but also because we are embracing talents into, into this uh, world and we are embracing um, a fresh look, mm -hmm. right? I always, my wife always says, you're a bull and therefore you only look at the world like a bull does. Mm -hmm. But when you have gender diversities, um, age diversities, and various cultures looking at energy, for example, um, we have a higher understanding on how we can respect the climate together mm -hmm. and how best to come up with a solutions because we have def different people thinking differently, wired differently, looking at the same problem with different lenses. And I think this is a more, uh, I would say, uh, uh, adequate way to make use of resources that we have. The second thing that I'm going to take back is how we ourselves, I'm a renewable guy. Right in front of the stage are some of the traditional oil and gas guys. Mm. How are we going to work together? Yep. It's never about I'm good, you are dark, you are not green, no. But we are looking at energy as a whole. Yep. How are we going to transit? After the transition is done, how are we going to transform? Mm. How are we going to hand over this whole uh, world to all our grandchildren and grandchildren, right? I think. Today, in, in what I see in this event, we are making baby steps. Yep. And that's all it takes, baby steps to run some out. Mm -hmm. 100%, very well said. And I think the inclusivity, inclusivity aspect and also the, the collaboration is just extremely important. We need to make sure that, that we keep going on with that, for sure. Yes. Um, so perfect, so thank you very much, Lawrence. It's been an absolute pleasure chatting with you and thank you to our team today and also everyone watching. If you'd like to learn more about Sunsea, please take a look at their website. Same with Inlet Asia and have a great day. Thank you, everyone. See you. Thanks, Lawrence. Okay, thanks. thanks.